Jesus. Okay. That's great. Got it. Boom. All right, recording in progress. That's what I like to hear. All right. Hi, Anno. Welcome. Thank you for joining us today. And hello to our audience. I see one, one person joining. Okay, awesome. All right, so welcome to the information session on St. Francis College. I'm with my colleague here, Anna um, Teodoro. Um, I have to practice my Spanish every chance I get. <laughs> All right, so thank you so much, Anna. Um, so with that being said, go ahead and take it away, my friend. Thank you very, very much. And thank you all at Education USA for setting this up. We know that you guys not only do a fantastic job at assisting your students, but also your international uh, US based and all over the world university. So we really do appreciate all the work that you guys do. But with that being said, hello everybody, welcome. If this was an ideal world, I would be saying hello to you inside of your classrooms. Unfortunately, in the Zoom world that we seem to be living on, welcome virtually. My name is Ana Luisa Teodaro. I am the International Recruitment Specialist at St. Francis College, where it's my privilege and also my honor to work with all international applicants coming into St. Francis College. Today, what I'm gonna be doing is sharing a little bit more about our university, um, some things you can learn and, you know, since you can't physically come to an open house with us, I'm bringing the open house to you. So today I'm gonna to be going over a little bit about our university, what international student life is like on our campus. Importantly, how do we apply? And I'm sure the thing that all of you are really excited to learn about, scholarship opportunities, because yes, we have many scholarship opportunities for you. At St. Francis College, one of the things that we're focused on is having you dream big and being the stepping stone for you to achieve all of the hopes and dreams that you want to and for us to be a part of that journey. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen with the presentation that I've created for you all, because again, I like to give you guys things and gifts, and this is my virtual gift to you all. So if nobody, um, if there's any issues with seeing my screen, please write in the chat and I'll be sure to either fix it up or change what that looks like. So let me make this a bigger on the screen. So sharing St. Francis College to you all. We are a private Franciscan based university located in downtown Brooklyn Heights, New York. For those of you who aren't familiar with New York, the way that I like to describe it as, if you're familiar with Times Square, we are not Times Square. We are close enough to Times Square, but one of the perks of being within downtown Brooklyn, if you look here to your lower right corner, is you have essentially the mix of both worlds. We are truly right in the corner of the Brooklyn promenade, meaning that you have an entire view of what the entire skyscape of Manhattan looks like. You're easily accessible to the nature aspects of New York City, which not many people think we have but we do, but also right across the street from Borough Hall, one of the biggest um, financial and also government sectors of New York City. We're one stop away from Wall Street and we're in the heart of Brooklyn where it's hot, hip and happening as my supervisor likes to say, which I picked up. Additionally, we are a Franciscan based university. We were founded in 1859. Franciscan based is um, the work focused on the pillars of the focusing on servicing ourselves through servicing our community. So we're, um, college that's really, really centered around understanding how do we serve the community around us? How do we serve our international community? And believing that we better ourselves by bettering the world around us. Additionally, something that we're really, really proud of is that we're one of the most highly affordable private colleges in New York City. The way that I like to describe it is a private school education at a public school price. We're gonna get into different details of what scholarship and affordability looks like for all of you as international students, but also note one, we have brand new residence halls, which I'll be showing you pictures with soon. And also we're moving, our campus is moving and we're gonna get that not too far. We're truly going around the block. This is something to note that we've been really, really committed with serving our student population and community with creating an environment where you all can feel comfortable, but also in an environment where you can succeed academically, socially, and professionally. Additionally, these are some of our numbers for you to look at. Our total population is about 2,600 to 2,800 um, excuse me, 2,800 students per year. That includes freshmen, transfer, graduate students all across the board. And additionally, our international student population ranges between 200 um, to 280-ish per year, so across the board as well. We're a smaller school, which is a benefit for you all because you're given personalized one-on-one -on -one attention from the point of choosing to apply to St. Francis to the point where you graduate. 
we have a small student to faculty ratio, meaning our classroom sizes truly don't average out bigger to being 18 students per classroom, meaning that your professors and your faculty members will have one-on-one -on -one personalized attention to you throughout your academic journey. And we're an NCAA Division I sports team, meaning that we compete at the highest athletic level that you can within the United States. So if you're a potential student athlete, just know that we have coaches, we have teams on board for you to join. And we do have sports on the recreational level. So if you're not particularly great, but you also still wanna play and be a part of that life, it is something that is easily accessible to you all. And we also have students that are from around the world and with a very high Caribbean population. So you will be with your other fellow classmates as well. Some other things to note, some rankings that we're proud of. Um, we're considered one of America's best colleges, according to Forbes magazine, and also one of the best valued college in terms of how much money that it costs to attend here. Some things to note of where we're located. Like I said, we're located in Brooklyn Heights, New York, right across around the Brooklyn Bridge. Um, I biked across the Brooklyn Bridge to get to work the other day. So just note that there's multiple ways to get to campus and we're easily accessible to all of Lower Manhattan and other parts of Brooklyn as well. For those of you who aren't familiar with what New York looks like, some different pictures and ideas to know these is gonna essentially be your campus. We're um, an urban campus, so meaning that we're essentially a building inside of New York City. So while Brooklyn is our home, the entire city is our backyard to be explored. As I mentioned, we are moving um, buildings. So we are not going to be in our old building that's located on 180 Remsen Street. We are truly moving around the block. We're in still in the same neighborhood, but we're calling it SFC Forward, meaning that we're go working with our growing student population. And then additionally, creating an environment where you all will be more comfortable and accessible to learn, making accessible for students and also really committed to ideas of diversity, equity and inclusion as well. So we can thrive in downtown Brooklyn for the next 100 something years. Additionally, this is gonna be what our new building looks like is the Wheeler building. So just some pictures for you all to get excited of what this new future is going to look like for you. So our residence halls, as I mentioned, our residence halls are completely brand new. This is the first year that we've had students live in it completely. So you'll be coming into a residence hall that has 24 hour security, free Wi-Fi, as well as a kitchen available, rooftop deck. And these views that you see here are not Photoshop. You truly have a view over the entire Manhattan skyline and Brooklyn Promenade from your bedroom windows. And we also have flexible, um, payment options for you to pay tuition as well as room and board. So we'll go into greater detail with that a little bit later, but just something to note, if you are someone that's looking to dorm on campus, we have several options for you as well. So something a little bit about our education. As I mentioned, our classroom sizes don't really average out to being bigger than 18 students per classroom. So you're going to be in small classroom settings with faculty that has flexible college, um, office hours, as well as in-person and online coursework. At the moment, St. Francis College is operating in-person with hybrid coursework. So what I mean by that is the majority of classes are in-person. We're not gonna put you on Zoom for a whole nother year, COVID permitting. But we do have coursework that does some in person, some online, meaning that you may have class one day in person, the other day doing a lecture online, vice versa, or a course that is fully in person. So just so you know, you will have that community aspect. You will be in the classroom, but in order to keep you and our student population safe, as well as our faculty and staff, we are operating in a slightly hybrid setting to accommodate COVID restrictions and also to be flexible for you all. Additionally, everyone will know you by name. I joke all the time and say, if you come in every single day with a cup of coffee and one day you forget it, the security guards will ask you and say, what, you forgot to get coffee today? we really know you by name coming in. And additionally, as an international student, you're not passed around to several different departments. You work with me and my staff in order to process you through as an international student, as well as we have an entire department called St. Francis College International that's devoted to the well-being and also programs initiatives for international students, as well as our human rights chapter, study abroad organizations, and many, many more things to be a part of, as well as the multiple different extracurricular clubs and activities that student life really, really thrives upon. So these are just some fun things for you to be able to look forward to and know what a little bit of a, a taste of what your education is gonna look like at St. Francis. If we look a little bit about our faculty, we have faculty from all over the world. 
you're not going to be the only international students on campus, as well as you're going to be with faculty and staff who are international as well. Some of our faculty come from places like Brazil, Turkey, South Korea, and Tobago are just a few that we like to talk about, as well as different opportunities for you to, you know, spread your wings in an international sense. You're not only limited to New York. International students are also eligible for study abroad opportunities to places like Segovia, Spain, which I've been. It's a beautiful place. You should probably try to go as well. As a student at St. Francis College, we have study abroad opportunities in Rome, in Spain, as well as Paris, France, of different places that you can also look into that you are eligible as international students, as well as a personal academic advisor and international student advisor in DSO to work with to make sure that you're maintaining proper visa status and following all the different rules and regulations to make your time at St. Francis not only fun, but also easy when it comes to all of those different paperwork that you have to go through as an international applicant. Another thing to note is a network of a lifetime. One of the biggest things that I tell students is when you're choosing a school and you're choosing a college, some things that you should look into is one, where is a community that I can thrive? There's no such thing as a perfect college. What there is, is the perfect college for you. And at St. Francis College, something that we really like to stress for our students is that not only are you given a one-on-one -on -one education experience, not only are you giving an admissions process that's specifically tailored and focused on you as international students, you were also given a network of a lifetime, meaning the education and also professional experience that you get carries on throughout your internship experience and also work experience if you choose to apply for organizations after campus. We have a career service center that's specifically devoted to the academic and professional advancement of our students and also networks in places such as ABC, Citibank, Chinks are just to name a few where many of our students have done internships and alumni have gone on to, as well as different programs such as the National Grid Scholarship, Campus B, the Brooklyn Navy Yard is a new one that we've recently partnered with. So not only are you learning inside of the classroom, you're learning hands-on in the fields that you're choosing to study. And we have an incentive for entrepreneurship that's dedicated to foster students' efforts to develop an entrepreneurial mindset and essentially turn your great ideas into great realities. So just note, we know for you all, education doesn't just stop in the classroom. We want you to have this experience outside as well. So some things for you to look into. Again, talking about athletics, as I mentioned previously, we're an NCAA Division I sports team. What does that mean? It means that we compete at the highest athletic level that you can in the United States. And some of our sports programs include basketball, volleyball, scholarship, uh, excuse me, soccer, I don't know where scholarship came from. I'm probably thinking of athletic scholarship. Um, water polo, swimming and diving are just some of the few of the sports that we have here. We also have a very vibrant athletic life on campus, meaning that faculty, staff, and students really do show up for games. We have music that plays. We have our mascot, uh, the terrier coming in as well. So it's something to note that even if you're not a student athlete, Athletic life is something that is very, very great in our community. Additionally, on any given time, we have about 112 international student athletes from all over the world that compete on our sports team. If you are somebody that's interested in sports, I do highly recommend that you look at our athletic sports page for more information with that and connect with the coaches that we have. Athletic scholarships are available and coaches are at discretion to offer them. So note that if you are interested in sports, we have several from you to choose from. Additionally, of many things that you can choose from, programs. We have 71 plus major minors as well as graduate programs for you to look at as a student. Essentially, if you're interested in it, we probably have it. Please note that you can also double major. You can major in minor. You can double major and pitch a singular minor. You can combine what your courses are going to look like at no additional cost. It doesn't cost any extra to choose a second major when you're studying. So these are just some things for you to look at. Um, we do have specific requirements for our nursing program. I do highly encourage if you are a nursing applicant to look at our nursing page that's on our website to see what those look like. But at the undergraduate level, the application process is generally the same. I'll go over materials in just a second. But what that looks like is submitting an application, transcripts, um, and as well as other pertaining documents and test scores that we'll go over in just a second. But just note, 
We have 72 um, majors and minor programs for you to look at, and that is growing. We also opened up some more graduate programs as well, and we're expecting more in the future. So these are some things for you to look at and get excited for as well. You also can change. You don't have to come in knowing exactly what you want to study. I tell all of my students, change is a good thing. You can learn, grow, and expand your ideas, and maybe, you know, come in with the idea that you want to do political science, and then your sophomore year ago, you want to know something, I changed my mind, and I want to be a mathematics major. There's always an option, you can do so. You also have an honors program. I, this is eligible for international students as well. Um, how do you apply? Is that one, you get accepted to St. Francis College. Two, you have a 98 above GPA. And then we have something called our scholarship day, and which is the day that we, we do it two times a year within January and March for fall freshman applicants. It's a chance to compete in our full tuition scholarship. I'm gonna go over that again significantly greater detail in just a second, as well as apply for honors. Um, some benefits of joining the honors program is you get to participate in special field trips and study abroad opportunities, attend regional honors conferences. Occasionally, we do have technology resources for you that are special in terms of like iPads and computers that may be offered throughout the year, as well as um, volunteer opportunities. You get to say you're a part of the honors program when you're applying for different conferences and also if you're attending applying on graduate school or things in the future. And additionally, you can conduct research and also be engaged in a community of other scholars with you as well who are learning and at a level of, um, I want to say, academic performance where you feel stimulated, engaged, and challenged. So I highly encourage everybody who meets criteria to apply to the honors program. It's a wonderful opportunity and I'm always excited to see international students engage in that. Additionally, if you're somebody who's looking for graduate programs, even if you're not a graduate student right now, if you're looking for a school that's saying, hey, I want to do undergraduate and graduate program within the same school where I don't have to change institutions. We have several graduate programs. We have a master's of science in accounting in management that has several different subfields as well, a master of finance and creative writing, as well as a master of arts and psychology. So these are different programs to look at as well as accounting and psychology as a four plus one structure. And what I mean by that is that if you choose to major in this in your undergraduate career, you do have the eligibility of completing the psychology or the accounting program if you choose those as your undergraduate majors to complete it in one year as opposed to two if you get accepted into the program upon graduation. So just note if you want to A, go to grad school, B, have an option of doing grad school in less than two years if you're an accounting or psychology student, this is a great option for you. And as somebody who applied to many different graduate programs and when they were in school, this is a fantastic opportunity for you to be a part of. So big thing that everybody wants to know, scholarship. Now, some things to note, as an international applicant to St. Francis College, you are automatically awarded scholarship upon attendance. Let's say that again, automatically awarded scholarship upon attendance and acceptance. So as soon as you're given an acceptance letter, you don't need to apply for a scholarship. You don't need to write an essay. You don't need to ask me. Essentially, once we send you an acceptance letter, scholarship is already offered and awarded to you in that letter. And you get to see what that amount looks like. It ranges between nine to $11,000 annually. That is awarded to you every single year. You don't need to reapply for it. You don't need to change it. It is given to you. This is our I want to say recognition of your academic performance and accomplishments that we give to you all as international students. Please note that as international applicants, you are not eligible for federal aid if you do not have U.S. citizenship. So if you are a student who is applying for a student visa coming into country, this is the same for all schools within the United States. International students are not eligible for federal aid. This is why we give you aid through the college itself. We award you scholarship. So if you are a student who is considered as a B and below, um, that meaning doesn't meet the GPA thresh mark of 3.0, please note that we tell you what your score is upon review, so you don't have to worry about doing that conversion on your own. Your scholarship looks like approximately $9,298, um, and that is what's awarded to you. If you want to be a part of our all-inclusive package, what that means is I've created a special package for international students that includes tuition, room and board, meal plans of breakfast, lunch, and dinner, health insurance, and books. Everything that you need essentially to live and survive in New York, if you don't want to look what those outside costs looks like, that ranges at 
500 US dollars. And that is for one full year. You don't have to worry about anything. And additionally, payment plans are always an option. If you choose not to enroll in our all-inclusive package, your tuition per year is approximately $18,000 annually. And that is if you're a B student and below. If you are an A student and above, your all-inclusive package looks like 38,500. But if you choose to not go into our all-inclusive package, you're awarded a scholarship of $10,000, which brings your tuition per year to $17,000 annually. Additionally, if you choose to enroll in our accounting, economics, or IT major, these are three core programs that we're really, really forcing, um, enforcing, excuse me, and really stressing because of the marketing connections that we have, because of the networks that we have within St. Francis College, your all-inclusive rate looks like 37,500. And if you choose not to enroll in that all-inclusive package, not a problem. Your tuition per year is at $16,000. Also note, payment plans are always an option. You do not have to pay everything up front. You can pay little by little throughout the year. We work out a payment plan with your bursar for you to enroll in. So you can learn a little bit more on how to pay that throughout the year. Additionally, let's talk about our scholarship day and full tuition scholarship. Also, small pause. I know this is a lot of information at once. If anybody has any questions, please write in the chat. Towards the end of this presentation, I'm gonna open up a Q&A for us to talk a little bit, learn a little bit more about each other and also answer some of the questions that you have. So back to scholarship information. Um, we do in our scholarship day, if you were an 85 student and above, you are eligible to compete in, in our full tuition scholarship opportunity called our presidential scholarship. But our presidential scholarship is we award several international students that are fall applicants. So you have to be a fall applicant that is a freshman student coming in. Unfortunately, transferring graduate students are not eligible for this. It's freshman applicants for the fall term. You have the opportunity to submit an essay in order to get a chance at winning our full tuition scholarship. What that means is that every year, for the four years that an undergraduate degree takes to complete, you do not pay tuition. The scholarship does not cover room and board, but for all four years, you do not pay tuition. Um, I have many international students who win it every year and it's always exciting to make that call and let them know that they won. And one of you on this call might be somebody that I get to call in the future and tell them that they've won a full tuition scholarship. The requirements to meet this is you have a B plus average or a grade point higher essentially than a 3.0, 3.5 in order to be eligible to apply. And then from there, you would have to write a essay. We have our scholarship day competition open for review. So if you are somebody that is interested, you can still apply. We're rolling admission school, meaning that we accept applications all throughout the year. The first um, round of scholarship day will begin in January. And then we have another one that happens in March. Applicants are, um, excuse me, finalists are chosen between April and May of when they're informed of the decision. So just note, if it is something that you want to participate in, you still can. There's still a lot of time in order to do this. I'll have all my contact information at the end of this presentation so you can let me know. Additionally, let's go over admissions requirements. As an international student, you have special requirements to apply. Not too special or not too crazy. First things first, submit an application. Our application is free. There is no payment that you have to make to submit to an application. You do not have to apply through Common App. You can apply through Common App or you can simply log on our website and submit an application directly there. Once you've submitted an application, you submit to me your high school transcripts. If you're a student from the Caribbean, what that looks like is one, your transcript from your high school throughout the years that you're attending. But most importantly, those are CAPE, CSEC, or CXC exam results. I need those as proof of graduation. And you also need them as proof that you've taken your exams that are necessary for high school. So for you all that are applying to the Caribbean, if you're applying um, from there, it is CAPE, CSAC or CXC results. If you're applying elsewhere internationally, send over your high school transcripts, any exit exams that you have to take. But additionally, I will let you know if you're missing anything. I send out personalized messages to all international applicants if they're missing details to their application of what materials they need to apply. Additionally, upon graduation of high school, you have to submit proof of your high school completion, which is a diploma. If you've already graduated. It is your, again, exit exams and or diploma. Please note, SAT, school, SAT scores are optional. We are an SAT optional school, meaning if you have them, great, send them over. If you don't have them, do not worry. It is optional. It does not hurt your application to not have one. It can only help, except 
if you are a nursing student and potentially a student athlete. Nursing students, it is mandatory for you to have SAT scores. So please, if you are a nursing student, let me know when you're planning to take your SAT exams. So I can help guide you through this process. Additionally, if you're from a non-English speaking country, which Caribbean is kept out, you all speak English. You do not have to submit a TOEFL, IELTS, Duolingo, PT, or ITEP score, proof of English proficiency exams. If you're applying from a country where English is not your language, of, um, the spoken language within your country, please submit one of those exams. And or if you do not have them, but you are fairly confident in your English skills, you can set up an English interview with me to see if we can waive that requirement. So this is a general overview. Additionally, I'm gonna drop in the chat in just a second on um, our international student admissions page so you can review that and take a quick look of what that looks like as well as see where my contact information is as well. Speaking of contact information, this is how you talk to us. And this is how there are multiple people that are on the team. We have Elizabeth Baldwin, who's the manager of St. Francis College International and the DSO of the school. She is my lovely colleague who I work with on a daily basis, as well as Esther Hassell, who's also fantastic, the administrative assistant and programming specialist at St. Francis College. And then my colleague, supervisor, boss, man in charge, and truly the man of the hour, Robert Oliva, who's the assistant vice president for enrollment management at St. Francis College. And then there's me. Ana Luisa Teodaro, the International Recruitment Specialist at St. Francis College. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, I am your first contact and resource. Please spam my inbox. I don't sleep anyway, and I love getting messages from you all. You can email me at ateodaro at sfc.edu, or you can message me on WhatsApp at 718-489-3473. I am open to emails and also messages on WhatsApp to make myself accessible to you all. So with that being said, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. Actually, I'm going to stop sharing my screen. I'm going to share it very quickly again. Sorry, just to show you some quick links to be a part of that I think would be helpful. Um, if anybody does have any um, kind of questions of how to access all this information, let me share very, very quickly, I promise. Um, you can always go on our international student admissions page. Under admissions, scroll down to international. You see my face right there. These are all the different details of how to apply. Additionally, if you go under student life, international student services, you will see also over here, all the information about St. Francis College International. Now I will stop sharing my screen so I can see some of the questions that we have coming in. <laughs> awesome, thank you so much, Anna. All right, so we have a, a couple questions lined up. Um, does St. Francis College offer a medicine or medical program? Yes, we do. For those of you who aren't super familiar with what medical school and medical programs look like in the United States, um, at the undergraduate level, most students who are interested in a medical field or degree, um, we're going to keep nursing out of it just for a second. We do offer nursing, but let's keep nursing. We'll put that in an imaginary box to the side. But what that would look like is majoring in a field like biology. We do have a pre-health program or pre-med. You're going to hear that word thrown around. Note that pre-med is not a major. Pre-med is a program, pre-med is a concept. It gets applied to different majors and programs. So a major for somebody that's looking to go into the medical field is something like biology, chemistry, in which you can pick a program like pre-health, like pre-med, which we offer, in order to kind of centralize your focus and ideas. And then in the future, you have academic advisors and professors who guide you of how to apply for medical school upon graduation. For students who want to apply for medical school, it is recommended that they do a major in biology and then you have to take a mandatory exam called the MCAT in order to um, apply for medical school. That's a five second overview of what it's like to apply to med school in the States. <laughs> all right, all right, awesome. Thank you, Anna. Okay, so next question, good day. What are the requirements to be admitted to the pre-med track for biology? Whether that would be CSEC or CAPE, et cetera. Um, what are the requirements to get admitted to the pre-med uh, program? Fantastic questions. Our requirements for that essentially is first, you would have to get accepted into our biology program first. Biology program is the same requirements for any of the undergraduate degrees, again, excluding nursing, 
Everything for this is excluding nursing. We put nursing on the side. If you're a nursing student, we'll get to you in a second. Um, it is getting into our biology program. Then after you do start programs, um, excuse me, after you do start studying, you talk with your academic advisor and seeing if you'd be a good fit for that program. It's more so seeing on your academic performance within that first semester. Ideally, I like to tell students, let's aim for a B plus or essentially an 85, 90 and above in order to get into that. But it's more so talking with your advisor and seeing how that's a good fit for you. Okay, thank you for that, Anna. All right, so we have a very interesting question here. Um, my students are so well prepared. Um, what is the relationship between St. Francis College and St. George's University School of Medicine? Great question, no wow. relationship. No relationship. <laughs> and what we mean by that is you'll see a lot of, uh, a lot of names thrown in between. So you're going to see St. Francis, St. George, St. College, a lot of St. Based A lot schools. of saints. <laughs> a lot of saints. We, we do thank our Franciscan brothers and we do thank the <laughs> ministries that have set the foundation of great educations for us coming in. <laughs> but just know um, we're different schools, but in terms of you applying for things in the future, academic advisors and department heads will help you apply for different programs. Awesome stuff. Okay. Um, I've been told by many universities that Cape Pure Mathematics is a big thing to join a science program. Is it a requirement for this institution as well? So Pure Math is an extremely hard um, test here. <laughs> I glimpsed it. I didn't take it, by the way, but I, I commend my students who, who, um, who, are, who are studying for this examination. Okay, so something that I like to, uh, to stress for all students is when we're applying for schools and we're applying for multiple universities, I want you to think of universities like countries, that each country has their own rules and their regulations. You know, how in the United Kingdom, they drive on the left side of the road. When you come to the United States, you drive on the right side of the road. I want you to think about that for universities. I'm a big fan of weird analogies, but I want you to think about that for universities as well. What's applicable to one university may not be the same rules for the other. So it doesn't necessarily mean that, you know, that's the standard across the board or one thing has it right. It's just every university has different things. So for St. Francis College, we like to make things a little bit easier for our students. We know you all as international students already have enough barriers in between of visas, applying for the I-20, which again, I guide you through that whole process with my team as well. So that's stuff to just note. We don't kind of throw you to the wind with figuring that out. We work you through every step of the way. So for us, when it comes to exams, especially with the things with CAPE, CSEC, and CXC results, for us, we take your top five scores. So it's not necessarily that you have to score fantastically on the pure math. We do try to do you a service knowing that these exams are hard of taking your top five highest scores for your graduating exams, apply that over and occasionally we'll talk to you one-on-one -on -one in an interview to make sure it's essentially acceptable for the program. So I wouldn't worry too hard. Worry enough that you do well in your exam, so don't worry enough too much that you lose sleep over this. We work with you at St. Francis College to try to make your future dreams and reality, um, future dreams in education a reality and opportunity. Awesome stuff. And for my pure math friend, I might come to you for some uh, tutorials. <laughs> so, all right. Um, next question. You previously stated nursing students need to take SATs. Do prospective students for the medical program need to take the SATs as well to be eligible for admission? They do not. So nursing applicants, this is where I'm going to take nursing out of the box that I put it in, put it back front and center. Nursing applicants for St. Francis College would be, should have a 90 GPA and above as well as SAT scores. We do have a potential waiving of SAT scores if you met the GPA mark of 90 and above, but I do highly recommend if you have SAT scores to submit them. If you're concerned about grades, if you're concerned that maybe it won't be able to come through, I do recommend if you're a nursing applicant to have an SAT score handy. It is helpful for the future. But for our program, and again, note that it's not necessarily a medical program. It is biology, chemistry. It is a major within the field of medicine or medical field that can be applicable to medical school in the future. Our requirements are the same as applying for majors, um, any other majors. It is submit an application, which is the biggest thing. And it's going to sound very silly, 
when you submit an application, please press the submit button. The amount of, and I know we're laughing, I laugh a lot of it too. When you submit an application, make sure that you submit all of the information and press that shiny button at the end that presses submit. That is the biggest thing because if you don't submit an application, unfortunately, you may not exist to me when I write reports. So please press that submit button. And additionally, when you're sending over transcripts via email to me, have all of your exam scores, have your transcripts, SAT scores are optional, they are not mandatory. If you already have an SAT book, please take it. I tell my students, it's always great for you to have options. Other schools may require it. I want you all to have options, apply to other schools, because ultimately, in applying to other schools, you're going to realize St. Francis College is the home for you, and I want to make that an opportunity for you. So if you have an SAT exam, wonderful. If you're applying to one of our programs and you don't have an SAT score yet, we usually have a one to two week turnaround when we're reviewing applications. We're a rolling admission school. We accept applications throughout the whole year. So I can guide you one on one to say, hey, listen, maybe you should book an SAT exam or oh, guess what? You're accepted anyway. You don't need to do this if you want to come to St. Francis already. All right, awesome. Thank you, Anna. And just as a shameless plug for the U.S. Embassy Kingston, we offer free virtual SAT classes, guys. So if that's something you're interested in, drop me an email. I'm going to drop my email address in the chat. Um, but yeah, if you if you need to do the SAT, we prepare you for free. So no, right? No, no, no excuses, right? Um, Not so at all. Next question, um, do you have the two plus two program for students who want to study engineering? So we do not have engineering at St. Francis. I wish we did, but unfortunately we do not. So we do not have a two plus two program or a two plus one program for engineering at St. Francis. Okay. All right, that was easy. So while I'm sharing my email address in the chat, um, is there anything else that you you need the students to know, Anna? Anything else that they they should use that they should present to you know give them present themselves in the best light um, when you know coming across when they're when they're submitting the application and you come across their application? Absolutely. Um, I think the biggest advice first that I can tell students, which is going to sound kind of silly, do not be embarrassed. I know a lot of students, when I, when I speak to a lot of new applicants or I get on a phone with them, a lot of them or a lot of students in your scenario tell themselves no before they even apply. A lot of students sometimes tell themselves, well, I'll never be accepted. Why should I even try? This is only for, you know, the smartest of smarter, the richest of rich. I want every single one of you to give yourself the gift and the opportunity to at least try. Don't tell yourself no before someone else tells you no. Because guess what? The amount of times somebody tells you no, you're going to have five more people that want to tell you yes. Give yourself the gift of applying and giving yourself a chance. The worst thing someone tells you is no, and you will live from it. I promise you, as somebody who was an international student at one point, I was told many times no. And guess what? I now get to tell students like you that it is possible to apply. So first things first is give yourself that opportunity to apply. Second of all, reach out to people in the admissions office for help. And secondly, I cannot stress this enough, look at dates and deadlines. If you do not have a calendar, grab a calendar and a marker and start circling dates and deadlines. For you all as international students, one of the biggest things and the biggest hurdles that you have to jump is the I-20 process and the student visa application. Applying to the school and getting an acceptance is step number one. Step number two is making sure that we're complying with different visa opportunities and different legal rules and regulations to make sure that you can legally come and stay within the country. One fantastic thing at St. Francis College is that we guide you through the whole thing. Every two weeks, what we do at St. Francis is we do an information session where I hop on a call for one to two hours with all of my international students, whoever jumps on the call. Sometimes we have four students. Sometimes we have 48 to 70 students on a call. Every two weeks, we go over admissions process and details, documents that we need, how to fill out paperwork, how to do your visa appointment. Additionally, every week, every Thursday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. in U.S. New York time, 
um, we do visa preparation. So if you're a student who has an upcoming visa appointment, or if you have a student who's been recently granted your I-20 from St. Francis College, you can come and join an information session in which we go over, what do I bring to my visa appointment? How do I prepare? What are some questions that they're gonna ask me? What do I not say? That's a really big thing <laughs> in order to figure out how to have a successful visa appointment. So utilize the resources that we're providing from, because guess what? As much as you want to come here, we want you here as well. St. Francis College, like I said, we believe that through serving our community, we serve a higher power and we serve ourselves within this world. It is not, like I said, it is my joy to genuinely work with every single one of US students. Because again, by changing one step of your journey, you will change the lives of countless others and yourselves. And it's an absolute joy and a privilege to be a little, a little pebble stepping stone in your journey to make this happen. Awesome. That's so beautiful. Thank you for that, Anna. And you know, um, guys, um, I concur and echo Anna's sentiment. Don't, don't allow, don't tell yourself no. You know, um, and I can speak from personal experience and guys, you're going to encounter this even after college when you're applying for jobs. <laughs> don't ever tell yourself no. Hit that submit button. Let the let the let the admissions officer or the, the persons reviewing your job application tell you no, but don't 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 do that to yourself, guys. You know, be bold, and be let fearless. Them say no. Let them say no. Cause then when someone let tells you yes, no. you get to turn back to them and go, you see, I told you I could do it. <laughs> told you. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. So next question I have for you. Um, what are the COVID policies that St. Francis College has in place at the moment? Great, great, great question. And I'm going to I'm going to kick myself mentally for not bringing that up earlier. So like I mentioned, we are operating in hybrid um, hybrid format. Majority of your classes will be in person. Do not be disgruntled if you see on your class schedule a class that meets one day in person, one online, or if you have a course that meets fully online. The majority of your classes will be in person. I see students every single day and I adore them to the point if I go, I got to run to a meeting and they go, but can you just hang out with us? And I go, I got to run to a meeting. So just note that in terms of what COVID policies look like at the school, um, it is required and mandated for all students, domestic, international, faculty and staff to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 upon entering um, your first semester. So before you enter the school and before you start courses, it is required for you to be fully vaccinated. Some good news, if you're not eligible to get vaccine in your home country, we have made it possible for you to get vaccine within the United States. You can get vaccine, you have, pick your vaccine of choice. It's one of, the, one of the vaccines that are acceptable within the United States. Off the top of my head, Moderna, Pfizer, Johnson & Johnson are the top three. We do accept other ones like AstraZeneca is another one I can name off the top of my head that are international. But if you are a student that you're saying, hey, listen, I can't get an appointment in my home country, we do have made it possible for you to enter the United States for the spring term. These dates are going to change for the fall term, but for the spring term, the earliest you can enter the country is December 20th, only when you're accepted and only when you have a visa. Please don't get on a plane unless you have a visa. You will not be allowed to enter the country. So this is just some fun, some fun immigration things to note. But essentially, um, you can get vaccinated. You do have to be fully vaccinated in order to attend classes. That's number one. Number two, you have to upload your vaccine card. All students, faculty, and staff are, have to do this. So it's something that we're doing to keep our vaccination safe. And some fun facts, since we started this fall term, we have never had to close campus or go fully online because we've had no full COVID cases that require a campus shutdown for this term. So it's showing that it's working, our student faculty are safe. Additionally, it is required to wear masks while you are on campus. If you're in the classroom, the only time that you can take it off is you know, to grab a quick bite and then in our socially distanced cafeteria. So those are some things to note. You do have to wear a mask. You do have to be fully vaccinated. Um, we do have testing sites around campus throughout the first semester. Sometimes we do have a testing van and a vaccination van, but we do live in an area at, in Brooklyn Heights that has vaccine and testing centers, truly maybe two every single block. And they're really everywhere. There's always a van. So these are some policies to note. Um, like I mentioned with coursework, it is hybrid. Um, the cap campus is working at limited um, capacity. So what that means is that when we have sports games and things like that, they're not at full capacity or there's not going to be students on top of students, you know, packing a classroom. We're socially distanced. We have things fully disinfected and cleaned every single day to keep our students, faculty, and community safe. 
Okay, excellent. I have a couple more questions for guys. You're asking some awesome questions. I Thank love you. love questions. That means I'm doing something right. <laughs> right. So um, we have a question. Um, when are applications open and when do they close? I'm guessing some deadlines or the timelines is what they're asking about. Mm -hmm. So we are a rolling admission school. What that means is that we accept applications all throughout the year. So our applications never truly close. But very big caveats. I wish I could draw on the screen so you could see the star that I'm drawing mentally. Very big caveat is even though we accept applications throughout the entire year, depending on when you apply, you may not be able to start that term. And what I mean by that, for example, our spring term this January, this spring 22 that begins January 19th, starts January 19th. If an international student applies this, um, oh my goodness, I forgot we came before 19 for a second. I'm very embarrassed. The 18th of January, a lot of words are being spoken. For anybody that's on the YouTube watching this later, you can fully laugh at me. You can mean me on the internet. I will, I will take that. Regardless, if you apply the 18th of January, you will not be able to start the next day to come into country. I tell all of my students to give yourself enough time to apply to a school, at least for St. Francis, every school has their own process. So for St. Francis, in order to apply, submit documentation, I-20 forms, submitting and getting the approval for the I-24s, scheduling your visa appointment and interviewing for your visa appointment, planning travel, planning room and board and housing, registering for classes are just 10 things off the top of my head that you have to do before you can start. The bare minimum, give yourself four weeks. And that is for a student that is very on top of their game. I've had a student who has completed all of this and I wanna say the quickest I've seen it was five days. And that was a race. Please, you, not every student will be that student who completes everything in five days. You will not be them. I can't even be them. <laughs> so this is something just to keep in mind. Budget your time accordingly, because the biggest thing is securing a visa appointment. Embassies that we know due to COVID are operating on very limited schedules. Some appointments are easier to get to the effort than others. Luckily for students applying in the Caribbean, you all have a little bit of a better time for visa appointments that I've seen this past year or two years. Visa appointments are, you know, limited but they tend to be a little bit quicker than most other countries around the world. So we are a rolling admission school. There are no solid deadlines, but I like to say, give yourself at least a month. And I will also inform you of your time frame of saying, hey, listen, we got to get this done within a week or listen, maybe this term's not going to work. Deferral is an option. So if you're not eligible to start one term, we work on your deferral. You don't lose your spot. You don't lose your scholarship. We just change the term that you start, whether it be the fall or the spring. Okay, awesome. Thank you for that, Anna. All right, so last question before we wrap up, guys. Um, are there options available for persons who are not able to be vaccinated due to medical reasons or because of medical yeah. reasons? So what that looks like is getting a medical exemption. Um, unfortunately, you can't just self-declare. It is a form that you have to fill and get it approved by our health department. I've had, had students who um, have applied for medical exemption and it is approved. So it's something that is a true medical exemption that you have, you know, doctors and people confirming this. I walk you through the process. We get that coming in. As long as we make sure that you are safe, our community is safe, we are, we're working with that. All right, awesome stuff. So guys, um, if you have any more questions, please feel free to email Anna. Anna, would you mind dropping your email address? I'm in the writing chat? it as we speak. <laughs> All right, so please um, reach out to her. Don't be shy. Um, you know, she said she doesn't sleep. She lives in New York City. I, I guess. truly, Nobody we sleep. are the Do city. Sleep in New York? We are the city that doesn't sleep. I tell all of my students. I will and I try to answer you as quick as possible. If I don't answer you, that is probably the many hours of the day that I'm in a meeting, or maybe the two hours of that day that I've decided to take a quick quack cat nap. So <laughs> I put in the chat my email address. It is atadaro at sfc.edu. WhatsApp is also a very quick way to reach me. It is 1-929-418-0043. Um, that you all can uh, send me a message. Also, just say hello. I love seeing that you all, again, we also run information sessions every two weeks. So once you submit an application, um, you will get notifications for every two weeks that we do do this. So you can come see me on Zoom. 
we get to sit and talk. Uh, I tell all of my students, if you jump to our information sessions, you put you, uh, what's, what's the right word? Turn on your camera so I can see your face when you do start as a student, because I like to say positive affirmations in the world. Mm -hmm. When you come to St. Francis College, you get t-shirts from me. So come to the sessions, let oh. me see you. I like to give you free things. <laughs> awesome stuff. Well, thank you so much, Anna. One of our viewers says, thank you, Anna. Great presentation. Awesome. So there you go. So expect some WhatsApp messages and some emails. <laughs> Please do. It's a pleasure to get to see you all. Like I said, Education USA, thank you guys all for all the hard work you do. It is a fantastic service that you do not only to, you know, the partners that work with you, but the students around the world that you guys all help service. And for all the students, like I said, give yourself the chance, dream big. I would the very corny say, saying is aim, aim for the stars or aim for the moon and you land amongst the stars. I butchered that saying, but regardless, give yourself the opportunity because there are people that want to help you get to where you want to go. And I can say at our family at St. Francis College, we are truly a family and we'd love for you to join us. Awesome. Thank you so much, Anna. And thank you to our viewers out there. Um, so stay tuned. We have our final session for International Education Week starting in eight minutes. That's with Lynn University. Thank you again, Anna. A wonderful presentation. Looking forward to seeing you in person, hopefully soon. <laughs> thank you so much. I'll talk All to everybody right. soon. Have a wonderful